I hate infantry. Oh, Zandes. I hate them. Why? It's the annoying taunts. The dim-witted ignorance of it all. Wouldn't I like to have feet of metal around me in a scrap? Brave men advancing in metal boxes. They know nothing. Because they don't do what we do. They have no idea. It's the constant battle with human nature. The cool one has to have to do what we do. They see us as safe and sound and snuggled up in our moving bunker. They don't have to think about it. Nor do they, or they would know. When they get shot at, they dive for cover, hide behind trees, scramble into trenches or zigzag about the place. They're hard to see and harder to hit unless it's point blank and the bayonets are out, of course. I don't envy them that, but that's about it. Us, at all points the enemy can see us, can hear us, can shoot us with impunity. We are always the primary target on the battlefield, drawing the heaviest fire, taking the best they can throw at us. If we stop, we die. One track hit and we are immobilised. Sitting in a coffin, a sepulchre, waiting for the next hit that will finish us off. We can be blasted away by Xenos who can fire from the very horizon. We know it, they know it. So yeah, I hate our infantry. Theirs, again, most think that our sponsors and front-facing guns can make us a moving fortress. This is true, but it only takes one of the blighters to get in. Only one to lob a sticky bomb or other Xenos explosive on us, taking out our tracks, getting behind us, or swarming us. Then again, we're trapped in a box with howling mobs around us, and the end is inevitable. As with everything else, the grass is always greener. Musing over, the order is given. It's time to go. I close the top hatch and button it down. I look down to Rotten and he grins up at me. <sighs> I wait for the vicious nasal assault that will make us all want to retch. He's been brewing this one up as usual. As the groans start like a wave around the crew, I can't help but chortle back at him. You couldn't cut this stench with a chainsaw. It's practically chewy, but at least the lads aren't worried anymore. At least they aren't thinking about what we are about to drive headlong into. Towel lines. Little blue bastards. This one is going to be a white knuckler for sure. They know we are coming and have the longer reach. All we can do is keep moving forward, always forward, until we hit the range of our guns. I certainly hope that the Emperor is with us today, as we'll need all the damn protection we can get. They have their tall night things, the ones that have those rail guns. Being hit by one of those is the messiest death you can imagine. I won't go into graphic detail right now. I need to keep my cool. A couple of hundred of us are moving forward as one. The cacophony of the engines is near deafening. We get to charge down a valley into their guns, you see. Those hoppy little things on either flank, showing us that they are there, which means they, they want us to know. But it won't stop us. Trying to persuade us it's a bad idea. Pfft, <laughs> Xenos. Guns to the left of them, guns to the right of them, guns in front of them. I slap him round the back of the head as I spit. Shut it, gobby, you prat! He sniggers as hard as Watson did. We all know the drill. We all play our part. We all do what we can to lighten the mood while staying focused. But that we are. Focused. A lion of us rush on three deep. When their fire starts hitting, they start gutting us one by one. As a tank in the second line, when our trailblazer gets mulched, our front is covered with the offal that was once the men inside only a second ago. Railguns. Nasty. We hit that tank hard and push it out of the way. The instant we stop, we are dead. So we barge past and take our place at the front. I can see the chevrons of the others in our formation. Lots are stopping, but more of us are pushing through. We can actually see our objective now. We start to fire back and finally get to see some revenge exacted, as their front lines and emplacements begin to explode and burn. Little blue bastards, we are coming for you. 
at this stage, gentle listener, I must now ask you for your opinion, your judgment. Do we give this tank crew a fighting chance, or do they receive the Emperor's peace? I cannot guarantee that they will survive, but it is in your power to decide if they make it to their objective, or if they receive a glorious death. Vote now, gentle listener, in the comments section, if you have time and the inclination. Capital D for heroic death. Capital S for survive until the enemy's lines. Capital C for crippled, meaning the crew are more likely to survive, but their mighty tank is downed, and honor and glory will not be theirs to stay. Do remember that this is the grim darkness of the future before casting your vote. Your mercy, your clemency, cannot always be given, so do save it for the votes that come closest to your heart. Please do make any comments after the letter, and leave one line between comment and letter, so it is easier for me to collate the results when it comes to the time. Now that that is out of the way, welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and war gear of the Warhammer 40k universe. I know I said I would do some Xenos war gear, but I had a request from one of the Baldemarti, Chris Coulson, one of my first patrons. Hence, next week we shall begin to peruse some of the most exotic, iconic, and interesting of the alien or Xenos war gear of the Warhammer 40k universe. Today, we discuss one of the most ubiquitous, most commonplace of all armored units in the entire Warhammer setting. The Lehman Russ Battle Tank. If you have not seen my introduction to the Imperial Guard, the Astra Militarum, I would advise you give that a quick look first, as it gives context to that which we discuss today. But have no fear, gentle listener, for this entry will be self-contained. Now, with that out of the way, the Lehman Russ Battle Tank. But do please remember that this is an introduction only. We shall drill into more detail as time permits. As numerous as the very stars of the Milky Way galaxy, there are few battlefields that have not felt the crushing gears and tracks of this mighty battle tank. It is not a heavy tank, it is a weapon of the line, the Swiss army knife of the Imperium's tank corps. It is literally everywhere, as it is the backbone of nearly every formation of human armor that is seen in the grim darkness of the future. For the crux of its description, let us lean on existing wisdom to perform the heavy lifting in this entry. To quote, Lehman Russ Battle Tanks Deadly, durable, and able to be fielded in large numbers. The Lehman Russ is a near ubiquitous symbol of the Astro Militarum. All but the heaviest enemy fire ricochets harmlessly off the thick armor plating of these battle tanks, allowing them to defend key battlefield locations or surge forward in an implacable offensive. The Lehman Russ battle tank is an ironclad declaration of might made manifest. They are the mainstay of the Astra Militarum's armored forces, lumbering slabs of armor and intolerance, whose inexorable advance has ground a billion foes of the Imperium to bloody ruin. What the Lehman Russ lacks in speed, it more than makes up for in brute force and survivability. Enemy fire patters from its inches thick armor like dust on the wind. Between its sponsons, hull and turret, the Russ carries enough firepower to pound almost any foe into submission. The tank's rugged simplicity and ease of manufacture ensures that the Imperium can field whole companies of Lehman Russ with ease, burying the outnumbered foe beneath waves of irresistible armored fury. Dedicated Lehman Russ tank companies play a key role in Imperial strategy and the greatest Imperial tank offensives will set armored formations many miles in breadth, sweep all before them in a rumbling tide. However, it is common to see armored companies broken into squads to support infantry and artillery elements in the field. The presence of even one Lehman Russ can provide an enormous boost to the fighting strength and morale of Imperial Guard infantry, while a whole squad of such armored brutes wields serious destructive power. Lehman Russ squadrons can be deployed to spearhead an all-out offensive, reduce an enemy breakthrough to a tangle of blood-soaked wreckage, or safeguard the thundering guns of an artillery company from attack. With its many common variants, the Lehman Russ is a versatile and deadly tool, 
in the arsenal of any Imperial Guard commander. Lehman Russ Battle Tanks The standard Lehman Russ is the most common battle tank in the Astra Militarum. Its tried and tested design has held up over the millennia better than any other pattern, making it the one most often requested by officers. With a versatile weapon fit and hefty battle cannon, the Lehman Russ tank is capable of facing down almost any battlefield target. A single squadron can provide a decisive presence during offensive and defensive deployments. Lehman Russ Exterminators The Lehman Russ Exterminator is a common variant of the standard design, capable of laying down a withering hail of fire. The Exterminator Auto Cannon's shells can tear through the lightly armored chassis as easily as they rip through flesh and bone. Though lacking the long range of some other tank variants, the Lehman Russ Exterminator is capable of devastating whole ranks of enemy infantry before they reach Astra Militarum's lines. The Lehman Russ Vanquishers The Lehman Russ Vanquisher is becoming increasingly rare as the skills and technology required for the construction of the Vanquisher pattern battle cannons were lost when the forge world of Tigris was overrun. However, no other battle tank possesses more raw stopping power, and so the Vanquisher is still deployed whenever possible against heavily armoured enemies. The long range and high first hit kill ratio of its main armament make it the anti tank weapon of choice for most commanders. Lehman Russ Eradicators The Eradicator's Nova Cannon fires shells containing a sub atomic core. Upon detonation, they produce a powerful shockwave capable of pulverizing both enemy barricades and the infantry sheltering behind them. The Eradicator's design has been replicated on dozens of Forge Worlds and is utilized throughout the Imperium. Its main role is to support troop formations fighting in densely packed urban areas. Lehman Russ Demolishers The Lehman Russ Demolisher was devised for but one task. Line breaking. It carries the short-range but highly destructive Demolisher Cannon the utter lethality of which makes this pattern of battle tank the undisputed king of the close-range firefight. With additional armor plating fitted on its front, the Demolisher is capable of pushing through devastating fire to close the gap between Imperial and enemy lines. Lehman Russ Punishers the Lehman Russ Punisher eschews anti-tank effectiveness for the ability to mow down infantry in vast quantities. Its turret-mounted Gatling cannon is an unstable bullet hose that applies the simple principle of overwhelming firepower to slaughter its targets. There are few other tanks in the Astra Militarum capable of such high rates of fire, and Lehman Russ Punisher crews have reputations for being both trigger-happy and gung-ho. Lehman Russ Executioners The Executioner is one of the oldest variants of the Lehman Russ, and during the Great Crusade, entire regiments of this tank were fielded. Gradually, over the millennia, knowledge of plasma technology has been lost, and the Executioner is now a rare relic. Where deployed in battle, the Executioner's plasma cannon fires with the fury of a miniature sun incinerating tightly packed infantry and burning through vehicle armor with ease. End quote. As we now know, there are many variants of this mighty weapon of war, making it one of the most versatile of all STC, standard template constructs, used by the military machine of the Imperium. But do not worry if you're not familiar with the term STC, for I shall perform an introduction to the technology of the Imperium and Grim Dark in due course. Ah, it is easy to lord the weaponry of the Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marines, the elite of the Imperium, but let us make no bones about it. It is the Imperial Guard who take on more than the lion's share of the action and the losses. For this reason, it is important to know the Lehman Russ as you should see it so often in games, both Warhammer Tabletop and Computer, and have at least a passing respect for it. For the Lehman Russ and its crews are the backbone of the Imperium's onward rush. They are the hammer that descends with all of the force of the Emperor's own ire, as they plunge into hails of fire and enemy lines across the galaxy. At no point in the last 10,000 years of the Imperium and no second in all of those millennia has there ever been a time where somewhere a battle is not blossoming 
where these tanks are present. But do not worry. We shall, in the future, go into greater depth on its history. Its myriad makes some models in more depth, its weaponry, and its glories. The Lehman Russ is also a great platform for me to mention a certain facet of the game and setting, if I may. Honorable and glorious defeat. For the Imperial Guard and the Lehman Russ battle tank are likely to take astonishing punishment from their opposition. Now, some may state that this makes them less appealing, less glorious. Well, I cannot agree. When you are engaged in a match, game or campaign, often people wish to curb stomp their adversaries, as the kids say these days. But there can be just as much fun and drama from taking a sound thrashing, if you view it in the right way. Go into your best John Wayne death stagger, lament as you take your brave men from the board, howl and scream and, and cry that vengeance will be yours. For taking a sound thrashing, getting a kicking makes for drama. It is a universal truth that some of the most romantically attractive of all forces are those who prevail after adversity. What courage is there? What skill? What stoicism is there in a walkover? It is why the Crimson Fists, the Blood Angels, and the Sisters of Battle, and the Imperial Guard, the Astra Militarum, are so genuinely loved in the setting, because they do not always win, because they do have to actually struggle for victory. It is no detraction on those armies and characters who seem to live a charmed life, and simply waltz their way to victory no matter the opposition, but it does not sing out a struggle of epic proportions. When you take a kicking, do it with good grace, and actually enjoy it. You will learn far more from a defeat than a victory. But also, it then opens the door for that most luscious and juicy of all battles, of all games or matches, the legendary grudge match. Sportsmanship is all, and fun is our aim. So relish the good times and the bad, and blame not the dice, blame not the statistics of your present army. See it all as perfect, as the way it should always have been, as another tale in the developing legend of your army. For snatching victory from the jaws of defeat, facing a pounding like no other, then rising like a phoenix to exact revenge. These are the things that are dramatic, and thus far more engaging. Look forward to your next tabling and play it out. Do not do so in the spirit of personal loss. Do it knowing that when you do have your day, it will taste so much the sweeter because of it. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. If you have enjoyed my introduction to the Lehman Ross Battle Tank, then do please consider liking and subscribing. If you are a regular gentle listener and see the value in what we are doing, then do please consider supporting us on Patreon, but only if funds permit. Sorry, honey. No, no, not, not yet. I thought I would try to fix those squats first. Got ogrins and rattlings working on Rough Riders. Beast men in the offing, too. Win? <laughs> then no, no, I won't win with them. They're not for fighting. This army is for dying. What? Well, I'd rather sometimes someone walk away with a spring in their step and a song on their lips sometimes, honey. I have other armies for me to do that with. Oh, no. They are an excellent army. I just want to wallow in the Alamo feeling with this lot. Well, until I get my head around them anyway. <laughs> oh, it's on again, isn't it? Now, no matter what you do today, do really try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.